Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today is episode one of Ask Blabs. Now, I went on my community page on my YouTube channel a couple weeks ago and I was like, do you have any Wizarding World questions for me? Ask them. And you guys did. Now, here's the catch, the Wizarding World related questions only. So we're gonna go through them and we're gonna see what questions you have for me, okay? So, Retro Island Boy 9708 says, I'm new to the channel, but really glad I found it. Thank you. As a video game collector myself, my question is, why are the holy grails of your collection maybe the top three rarest, most expensive pieces? Ooh. Mmm. Because this one's a bit of a hard one. I don't know. I really do love my um, Nova Collection dragons. Those are really hard to find. Um, maybe not. I don't know if that would be a top three. Maybe I might, I don't know, like, pieces? That's hard because I have sets and things that, like, a complete set, which makes me really happy, you know? Like, if it's just one piece, it's like, ah, I'm missing the other to make it really complete. I will say, uh, the Doom Spell Tournament promo, which is the original title of Goblet of Fire. I'll have to make a video explaining everything that happened, but that is the original title of book number four. I have the original promo. Most of them were burnt from Schoolastic, but I have it. It's actually hanging up on my wall, right there. But, uh, that's one thing. I don't know. It would have to be, like, series of things. So I really love my Gentle Giants. I really love my art box. I love a lot of my translations. Ah. I feel unprepared, but I really can't answer this one. This one's hard. Ooh. Mm, I will just answer one of those because I don't think I can, could possibly give you all the answers you want. Uh, and I'll definitely never tell you how much I've spent on the most expensive stuff either. Cajun Corey wants to know, what is your favorite Harry Potter book? Uh, my favorite Harry Potter book Dude, I love them all, and every time I think about this, I'm like, how could I possibly change my answer? <sighs> I don't know, maybe Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets? I don't know what it is, but I really love that whole mystery. The Chamber of Secrets itself, the Basilisk, uh, Aragog, it was just really exciting. But honestly, all the books are so great. I mean, they're so different from the movies, too, so uh, maybe even the Half-Blood Prince book? It's really fine, but at the same time, it's like Harry's obsessed with Malfoy for most of the book. Maybe Goblet of Fire could be my favorite book. That's the one's really fun too, really different, you know, with the Bobaton students and the Durmstrang students. I like them all, all of them. They're all my favorite. And what's your favorite Harry Potter collectible you've collected? Well, I kind of answered that one before with Retro Island Boy. I have to say, my Dewey Spell Tournament prom was really fun and has a great story to it that I will share one day in an actual video. Um, Max Angor wants to know, what are your thoughts on the house system? How do you think Slytherins can rehab their image? Well, I don't think there are all bad Slytherins. I mean, it's very obvious. You can look at one who is a, a very notable presence in the books and the movies, and that's Professor Slughorn. He's a Slytherin. He taught potions in Harry's sixth year, and then he was head of Slytherin when Snape became headmaster. And he was fighting in the Battle of Hogwarts against Voldemort and the Death Eaters. So I don't really think there's a huge tainted image. A lot of Death Eaters were Slytherin, right? But not they're not all bad. I mean, you can look at like Lita Lestrange from Fantastic Beasts. She wasn't all that bad either. There's some cases here and there, you know? Uh, so when I think about the house system, if you mean like, oh, I th sometimes think we sort our students too soon. Not really. I mean, like Peter Pettigrew was... A Gryffindor, right? But he totally was disloyal to his own friends, but he was loyal and a coward to Voldemort. Does that make sense? Like he was loyal enough to stick around to save his own skin to Voldemort instead of dying for his friends. So it's a different type of loyalty, I guess. Does that make sense? Maybe I'm coping here, but <laughs> that's how I see it. Uh, Erica Jala4669 says, Why does Michael Gambon play Dumbledore like a crazy maniac in the Did you put your name in the Goblet of Fire scene? Yeah, it's because he didn't read the script. It didn't like, well, I mean, he read the script, but like he didn't read the book. So he just went in there blind thinking this is how Dumbledore was supposed to portray like, you know, Dumbledore and it, it was a fail. And then I think he read the books afterwards and I was like, oh, to be calm and stoic and whatever. So, you know. How many times have you visited the Wizarding World Park at the Universal Orlando and do you plan to return? This question is from Big Joker. So I've only been there once. 
I do have plans to return. I know that the boss man Craig was saying we should go in sometime in 2025 when the new Epic State, like, uh, Epic Studios, I should say, is opened. Uh, so hopefully I'll be back in 2025. Uh, I have been collecting the merch from Universal Studios since 2010 when they opened. Like, I have stuff that is retired now for years on end. You can't find it anywhere, but I have the original merch. XM202WOWR Real says, Also, how do you catalog your collection? So I won't be showing you my Excel spreadsheet, but that is how I catalog everything through Excel. I do like the item name as best I can if it is an actual, no if there's a title on the item, like the packaging or whatever, I'll use that. I'll use the ISBN also in another category. I'll use the purchase price, how much I paid for it, the year it was released, the year I bought it, uh, things like that. I'll put a little example right here and you know, you can see it for yourself. Or maybe we'll just open one up right now. Okay, let's open one up. Let's just say I am looking at um, my translations. So I'm one of my translations sheet because everything is by sheets, not all one just giant sheet because that would be like crazy. So here I have it as um, the Bloomsbury Complete Collection Signature Edition hardback, hardback box set. That is the title. And then underneath it, it's like all the books individually with their ISBN numbers, then the publisher, then the edition. So like first edition, first printing, blah, blah, blah. The binding, if it's hardback or not, the year is released, the specific printing year, uh, the year purchased, and uh, the retail price, and then how much I paid for it. So there you go. That's a whole lot of information right there, but that is how I do it. Um, another example could be, um, my Lego sets, so I have the set name, the set number. If it's factory sealed or not, you just put an X saying yes, factory sealed. The year release, the year purchase, the retail price, the purchase price. Uh, yeah, so that is basically how I do it. It's been a work of over years. This doesn't happen overnight. Originally, I kept everything in a book, but it's just, it's it's so inefficient writing a book and then finding everything where if you want to find something really fast you just hit Control f and you type it in and there it is um how many times have you read the book series from ben Ryder? i have read them an infinite amount of times i can't remember how many a lot i'll say that nick brown 1846 says if you could use only one spell for the next hour which spell would you use for the next hour like, am I going somewhere? I need more context here. I can't just decide like a random spell. Um, I mean, if it was a really, really hot day and I don't have a pool, maybe I'd just use like Aguamenti and I just chill out with water. Uh, if I'm going into the woods at night, maybe Lumos for an hour and go for a stroll in the woods. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I need more context for this one hour, to be honest, before I can decide. Uh, Jack Ripper says, which scene from the book do you really look forward to getting adapted in the upcoming series, which was missed in the movies? Ooh. I mean, I've, there's so many scenes, right? I mean, the entire character of Winky was omitted from Goblet of Fire. So that could be really fun. I mean, who doesn't want to see a drunk house elf cry for her uh, boss who fired her? <laughs> so there's that. Um, you know, the Quidditch World Cup was really omitted. Let's be real here, it was, you saw it for two seconds. Um, the ending of Half-Blood Prince, the entire battle, that was missing. I mean, the Deathly Hallows battle was kind of missing too, if you really think about it. So, like, honestly, every little scene that was missing would be amazing to see, if done correctly, with the right type of cast, and there was no agenda or bullshit, it was just solely translated from page to screen. That'd be awesome. Uh, JM the Elite Fan says, what initially led you to, led to your interest in the Wizarding World IP? Was it the characters, the fantastical construct of the world, etc.? Uh, so, my mom had read me the books when I was a kid. Uh, I can't remember. I think it was like the first two or so. And then we went to see the movie, the first movie in theaters, and I was absolutely terrified. I think I sat in my mom's lap because I was like five or whatever. 
Um, you know, it was kind of scary when you're a little kid, but I absolutely loved it. And then my mom was just buying my sister and I all the toys, the Legos, Mattels, and it just blew up from there. And then around 2007, when Order of the Phoenix movie and the Deathly Hallows um, book was out, I was like, right, I'm going to collect everything. And then I started like being like, a real collector I guess I would say when I was like 11 <laughs> and then it's just blown up since then. Uh, AE Kynam has the same question I've already just answered. Rob Skilled says, do you own all the books outside all the novels like the Creature and Artifact Vault, Page to Screen and all the smaller books? What editions since some have different ones? So yes I do own a lot of books that are not like the actual Harry Potter books. Like I have a lot of Lego minifigure books, things like that. Um, but I also have a lot of journals. I have a lot, I have all the page to screens, the film vault stuff. Uh, I have lots of stuff. Like you'd have to be more specific. As for editions of those, I don't really keep track of those editions because they're not really like worth a whole lot like edition wise unless you know the the odd one here and there, right? But yeah, no, like I'm looking at my spreadsheet right now and I have the entire film vault collection. Yeah, like I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm scrolling, I'm still scrolling. This is all the books that I have, so the answer is yes. <laughs> I do own them. I used to have a lot of like the coloring books that was released when I was a kid. But a couple years ago I actually sold them all off because I just, I kind of had to downsize a little bit and the coloring books aren't really valuable. So I did keep a lot of the pre-film coloring books and the illustrations like that. But things based off the movies like from school last six coloring books, I did sell those. It kind of hurt my heart a little bit because they're so cute and they were a huge part of my childhood. But a lot of them I had either drawn in or scribbled in. There was like a lot of stencil scene art, scene to page or whatever it was. And I got rid of those too, sadly. I didn't get rid of them, like throw them out. I sold them. Somebody else loves them now more than I do. I think of it like that. Shieldwell of Dragon says, if you could play Quidditch, what position would you want to play? Okay, so I am not strong enough to be a beater. I'm not bulky. So maybe like the Seeger because I'm pretty fast and tiny or like a chaser. That'd be really cool. Definitely not. Well, I don't want to be a keeper. That's just, that's too much pressure. I always hate being the goalie playing soccer. So that's a no for me. Thomas Gilkey wants to know, what is your favorite character in the movies? Ooh, Fred and George Weasley are my absolute favorite. Like, I have a whole display just for them, so they are my absolute favorite. Uh, Thomas follows up with, what would you be your Patronus? So my Patronus is a fox. AI Internet 239 says, who is the best actor in the Harry Potter films and why is it Alan Rickman? I mean, listen, Alan Rickman made Snape a better version of Snape than he actually is. So I don't really think like he's the best actor for it because he didn't like, I mean, Snape, Alan Rickman's great, right? But like he made Snape better. So uh, I wouldn't say he's a very accurate portrayal, would you? If you make him a lot nicer and everything, right? Not saying it's a bad portrayal, I really enjoyed Alan Rickman as Snape, but I I would say... Who would I say is the best actor? Honestly, Helena Bonham Carter, Maggie Smith, nailed it. Julie Walters as Molly Weasley, nailed it. I would say those. Uh, Thomas also follows up saying, what would be your bogart? So that's something you're afraid of, and I, I don't know, maybe fire? Yeah. I think fire is awful, so uh, that might be, I guess. Andrew Van Halen says, who do you think was the best and worst director in the HP movie series? Okay, so the absolute best directors for me is Chris Columbus, who directed the first two Harry Potter movies, and those to me are the best ones, the most, the most faithful adaptations, I would say. As for the worst directors, I mean, we only had four of them, so it's kind of hard to pick. Maybe David Yates, because Half-Blood Prince was an absolute mess. It was so dark. Uh, the acting chemistry between Ginny and Harry was abomination. And that's not even the actor's fault because if you paid attention to Ginny in Goblet of Fire, she was a bit sassy and everything. And like she was starting to have that sass that she was supposed to have in the books. And then that was just gone by half Blood Prince. They made her very stale and boring. Uh, there was no fight at the end of Half-Blood Prince, really, right? So, like, all these things that I would say are just make him, like, probably the worst director. Like, like I said, I enjoy every single movie. But if I really have to criticize either that or maybe some of 
Mike Newell's decision in Goblet of Fire was a bit iffy, but at least he had the kids having fun and everything, you know? So I would think that would be it. H-G-H-I-N-D-E-R says, Is there world hunger in the Wizarding World? No, that's not true, and if you read the books, you would know why, because of, like, Gaunt's... Is it Gaunt? Gwomp? Whoever it was. Somebody's elements and all that. Five elements. You can't just make food appear. You need, like the ingredients to make food. You can't just summon food from nowhere. That's why Harry, Ron, and Hermione were always starving in Deathly Hallows because you couldn't just zap food appears or else they'd be very happy and, you know, not starving for half the book. Uh, also, if Wandless magic is so powerful, who was the wizard in HP1, I think, who was stirring his coffee with his finger while reading a book and just how powerful was he? So, that was in Prisoner of Azkaban where he's just kind of stirring it and that one was, that's actually a cameo of somebody, I can't remember his name, he's some, some famous dude, but that wizard has absolutely nothing. And in fact, um, students and all that, like wizards and witches in Africa, I think it was like Uganda or something like that, they actually don't use wands for magic. It's just a different type of magic, they just don't use it. So, uh, but um, I think, guys, I answered all the questions. That was actually kind of fun, I enjoyed this. If you guys have other questions for me, uh, next time I make a community post and only on the community post will I answer the questions, you know, Feel free to ask them then, whenever that'll be, because I'm a busy bee, but, uh... So thanks for asking your questions, guys, and I will see you next time. Bye!